The magnetic low temperature differential Stirling engine is a true marvel of engineering and science, and it is as challenging to explain as it may be to understand it. The main difference between this model and other Stirling engines is the use of magnetism in place of a physical linkage to drive the displacer. And here are the working parts on this particular Stirling engine. The bottom plate, the chamber containing the working fluid, which in this case is air, but it can also be hydrogen or helium. The displacer, the magnet at the center of the displacer, two O-rings to seal the working fluid inside the chamber. The top plate, the hole that lets the working fluid, in this case air, act on the working piston. The cylinder, the piston and the other magnet, the arm, the flywheel, the two precision bearings, the support tower. Now let's see what causes one complete turn of the flywheel. We have a glass filled with hot water, but it could also be your morning cup of coffee, your afternoon tea, or some other source of thermal energy, except open flames. The hot water has received an energy input from an external source, such as the microwave oven, the stove, etc. This air, just above the hot water, heats up and transfers its heat energy to the bottom plate. Now the bottom plate and the top plate have different temperatures, and the engine has the essential requirement to do its work two surfaces with a difference in temperature, and it doesn't matter which one is hot, which one is cold. At this point, the magnet at the center of the displacer and the magnet at the bottom of the working piston are in close proximity, and the displacer is held up at the top of the chamber. Okay, so far we have followed the thermal energy from the external source, to the water, to the air, to the bottom plate. Now let's get to the engine itself. Inside the chamber, the air at the bottom heats up because it is in contact with the bottom plate. This layer of air heats up, expands and starts pushing the working piston up. Remember, hot air expands. When the piston moves up, it moves the arm, which in turn moves the flywheel. But when this arm reaches its maximum distance upwards, the magnets are too far apart to exert any attraction on each other. Therefore, gravity wins the battle and pulls the displacer down to the bottom of the chamber, sending the hot air to the top. Now you know why this component is called the displacer. It displaces the working fluid, which in this case is air. This hot air comes into contact with the cold surface of the top plate. And the cooling effect that takes place at this time makes the air shrink. Remember, cold air shrinks. At this time, the total pressure inside the chamber decreases and the atmospheric pressure pushes the piston down because now the atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure inside the chamber and the flywheel continues turning. When the magnet at the bottom of the working piston returns to its lowest point, the two magnets are well within each other's magnetic fields and therefore the displacer is attracted back up again to the top of the chamber displacing the cold air back down to the bottom of the chamber. And you guessed it, we have completed one full turn of the wheel, and we are right back where we started from. <laughs>